Hi everybody, Mayor Betsy here. It's great to see you for Fort Worth's 37th National Night Out. We have some special guests today, and of course, masks always get hung in your earrings. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your neighborhood and that you can get engaged on a Zoom call or however social distance you do it. But I'm gonna jump right in. Today I've got Assistant Chief Charlie Ramirez with us from the Police Department. Charlie, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate the invite. It's great to have you with us. It's a strange way to be doing National Night It really night is. Out. It really is, because you and I are both people persons. Yes, indeed. And we love being out there. But yes, yeah, we do. But we'll, we'll make it work. Yes. But it's a big community building night for families, for neighborhoods to really get to know the police department. So tell us a little bit about what y'all are doing or how people can connect with their police well, department better. Well, you know, better. this is a great opportunity. National Night has always been that annual campaign that mm -hmm. the police department can out there and really reach the neighbors and allow neighbors to communicate with neighbors on that night as well. Um, but what we're doing a little bit differently, I think, uh, because of COVID is we're asking the, the citizens of Fort Worth or anybody to uh, join us on a virtual um, the National Night Out. I know it's a little bit strange, but again, we really wanted to let the residents know that we're here for them. And even though we can't be with them in person, we, we are here for their needs and uh, you know, as they, we move through this all together. It's different, but you know, COVID has changed the way we do a lot of things. And I really think that this is just another example of how neighbors are gonna have to learn to get out and social distance from each other and do things. And what about their NPOs? Are their NPOs still out doing their job? Of course, you know, they're, they're still doing the, the, the events that they normally do, but just for a smaller, so smaller crime watches, smaller forums that they're trying to get, and a lot of things virtually. So we, we're really using uh, technology to help us still communicate with our, with our Code Blue members and our neighbors. So yeah, we continue to do the job, but it, it has changed and we just have to adjust. And I think, you know, once we get through it, we'll be, We'll be fine. Fortunately, we'll have most of our kids back in school shortly. Oh, and yes. That'll yeah. free up. But one of the beauties of, of this COVID thing, I've seen my MPO a lot more. He's out driving around, has a little more time, it seems like. And more neighbors are outside, walking, riding, running, the, riding their bikes, running. I, are you I, guys seeing some connection? Oh, I agree. I, I, I think uh, even in my neighborhood, we're walking more. We're not being able to get to the gym like we used to. So we're taking advantage of the great weather that we're having and communicating that way. So yeah, neighbors getting to know neighbors again, people getting out of the house from behind the, you know, the doors and open them up. So yeah, we, we are trying to take advantage of it. But again, our neighbor police officers have always been in that community and they're always uh, making sure they contact their, the folks they know on their beat. And what are a couple of things you can name that police department's done in the last two, three, four years to really improve community connections? Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of things, but more importantly, we've, I think, you know, early on, we've always been known for our community policing, mm -hmm. but some efforts we've really tried is uh, training that we've included the, our community to come in and experience. We've actually invited them into our police academy classes as well to talk, but more than anything, being more transparent in what we do and using social media to really push anything that we have uh, um, come, come, coming through the calendar or invite people in and as we continue to do forums virtually as well. So again, just the constant communication, the, the thinking out of the box really when it comes to how we uh, look at how we, we maintain the trust or earn the trust of our community moving forward. And we have Code Blue and Citizens on Patrol and how do people volunteer for that if they that's, want to? And what do they do? Well, that's, you know, it, again, we have, it's a little bit different with COVID, but we're, we're still asking folks, you know, we're, we're doing our Citizens Police Academy virtually. So even though you can't come down to the academy, experience a lot of things that you normally would, we're still able to com communicate that way. Code Blue does the same way. We, we do have our citizens who are still willing to go out there and patrol. They're staying in their cars and staying safe distance away and making sure they, they um, you know, adhere to the, to the CDC and the, of course the governor's order when it comes to meetings and stuff. So um, there's always opportunities to volunteer. There's always op opportunities to get involved in all that's listed on our website, but a few, are, again, our police academy. Uh, and for our youth, we have our PAL program, which we started back up. We have the gyms open, but at a limited capacity. And PAL is. PAL Police, police Athletic, Athletic League. League. And so we do the boxing and we do the football, basketball, and all those events for the kids. And now you mentioned they were going back to school. That's exactly what we're gonna use it for again. So there's still lots of ways to get involved. Uh, we may be limiting on how many we can use this time, but you know, as soon as we can, we're gonna get back into it. 
we have a police department that has done a beautiful job reaching out in the community and getting connected. Are we perfect? No, but none of us are perfect, but we're making great strides yeah. in that direction. And I'm pleased that under Chief Krauss and his executive team, of which you remember, mm -hmm. you guys have done great leadership, particularly trying to engage our neighborhoods. So. We, have, we have tried and will continue to do so. And I know, you know, it, it, it is tough um, from the national sentiment around with law enforcement, but I think, you know, our department is, is different in a lot of ways because we've always done community policing, community policing since I've been here, and that's going on 30 years now. So, again, a, any opportunity we can to, to develop those partnerships and, and regain, re regain that trust. And we we'll listen to the community and their concerns, and we've made major responses in this time's budget and in some of our repositioning on uh, CCPD dollars to try to address some of that. But this, this is a community that supports our police department. You feel that? Oh, yes, and we saw that when we did the CCPD uh, renewal. Uh, it was amazing that the community really overwhelmingly decided that, you know, the department and the city needed this to move forward because, you know, a safe city for everyone is, is, is really a key. And it's, it's just where we are right now. Yeah. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you, Charlie, well, thank for thank you, being Mayor. with us. You guys get to know your NPO and all your officers that you see. Find out who they are. Tell them who you are and get engaged. Volunteer for Code Blue, Citizens on Patrol, or take your kids to the Police Athletic League and let them play basketball or box. They might even let us do it, right? <laughs> we will help you come down, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, COVID has really changed the way we connect to our neighborhoods and what's going on in National Night Out. Usually we're out and about. Today I've got a friendly face with me for tonight's deal. It's Brandon Bennett, our City Code Compliance Director and City Health Official. Brandon, I've had you on Facebook Live several times. Yep, yep. Thank you for having me tonight also. It's great to have you. And yeah. Isn't this weird? It is. 2020 is a strange year uh, anyway. It, it, so. And you know, in Fort Worth, we're so used to hugging and, 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 and having barbecue on National Night Out and, and all the other fun things. And uh, we'll, we'll try to make it just as enjoyable virtually this year. And your crews, like me, you're usually out at five or six different neighborhoods, as many as you can make and be all over town. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's strange to have it. So tell us a little bit about during COVID, what y'all have done and what families can do for their family. We talk about this a lot, but I think a national night out is a great time for us to talk again about kids going back to school, more sports gatherings, more outdoor gatherings. What really would you say they need to be doing? Yeah, you know, I, I, I am, every day I get more and more impressed by the things that people do, and uh, particularly in neighborhoods. And this is an awesome opportunity uh, for people to reconnect in their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. I, I know when you were talking with the police chief, uh, you mentioned that a lot of your neighbors are out walking. And, yeah. And so are mine. And there are neighbors that I've never had a conversation with, and now I have a conversation with them all the time. And 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 that is, uh, if there's a silver lining to all of this, one of the best ones. It'll be better uh, for our health too. Yeah. But you know, neighborhoods. What we're seeing is uh, uh, them being creative. Uh, not too long ago, we had a, a neighborhood not too far from me where um, all the neighbors sat out in their front lawns uh, at, at, at these foldable card tables and they played bingo. They had a speaker at the end of the street and so it kept the families together, the units that lived together, it kept them separated from the other families, but then also connected people in a fun way. And, and I think National Night Out from a, a health perspective, um, there's a lot of things that people can do from uh, scavenger hunts, get in the car and drive around. and uh, have a contest to see who can see, uh, you know, a number of things from, from their car doing it safe. Uh, and to connect, of course, through Zoom and, and, and some of the other uh, connections. Uh, but I can't say enough from a public health perspective about the wearing a mask, yeah. no, matter, no matter what you're Wear doing. Wear your mask. That, that, you know, we haven't talked about this a whole lot, but, you know, when you really think about um, the messages that we got back in the day about don't drink and drive, Right, because we knew that if you if you drank, you could kill yourself, or you could kill and you drove. You you could kill yourself, kill somebody else. We did the same thing with smoking. We said mm -hmm. stop smoking because you're going to kill yourself, and quit smoking around people because you sick. could kill them. Yeah. And you know the wearing of masks is no different. That you know uh, our population's done a really good job of late of of really getting into uh, compliance, and now is not a time to. to, to to give up on that. We don't we don't give up on drinking and driving. We don't give up on smoking. Of course, and we don't belts. give up on wearing seat belts. We don't give up on the mask. Yeah, just wear your mask. I mean, they're not they're not always comfortable. 
but be reasonable about where you wear it. I mean, when you go out to eat, you, once you're seated, you don't have to have it on, but you should wear it in between, and you should wear it when you go out in your neighborhood. Now, if you're vigorously exercising, do you expect people to wear yeah, their masks? Yeah, they're not going to be wearing a mask. No. no. It's uh, almost impossible. Yeah, yeah, and it's you do the best that you can. You know, six feet of separation is good, 12 feet is better, right? So when you exercise, pick times when there's not as many people. If you do it on the trail, when they're not on the trail, uh, pick, you know, maybe run around your neighborhood instead of running around the track. You know, there's lots of things that people can do to be safe. Yeah, people this. in my neighborhood have gotten pretty good at avoiding each other yeah. and still being far enough apart. Going to the other side of the street. And wave and talk <laughs> yeah. and, you know, let their yeah. dogs say hello and still keep themselves safe with that way. And a lot of people just wear their mask pulled down and put it up when they approach somebody. Yep. But we also have hand washing and social distancing yeah. and now we're into flu season that's right and you know early on we were really worried about a, a double whammy uh, so again I want to compliment Fort Worth and its citizens because we have done a fabulous job of wearing masks and not only was that going to help us with COVID it's also going to help us with the flu uh, but the flu is inevitable it's going to happen and we're going to have a, an impact on our health care system uh, that's going to be tremendous mm -hmm. because we know that in the fall the coronavirus will tend to spread more easily uh, for a number of reasons one is people are indoors one is because of the cooler uh, less humid temps and that's the same thing that happens with the flu during flu season. So we, we know that that's going to be an impact. So if you're sick, stay home. Yeah. Right. Stay home. You know, don't don't go out and about. Don't be around sick people. Right. Uh, and if testing's available and it's available quickly for you to get quick results and you got to know what those results are to make decisions about whether you go to work or don't go to work. Um, take advantage of the testing. And that we test. have good testing. People we, can get tested and you don't have to have your nose swabbed. You can now do a yeah. saliva test. It's much easier. Absolutely. We have the, the saliva test and then we're on the cusp, you know, of getting the quick 15 minute yes. uh, Abbott test. And, yes. you know, there can be a high demand for those. Uh, but, you know, hopefully by the time we get into November and early December, we'll have a sufficient number of those. Yeah, I hope by the time we get to holidays where people really do want to gather that we'll have those quick tests or when people begin to return to their offices that their bosses, their business can test them, you know, every week as they go in. And yeah. I think that'll help us a lot. Absolutely. And hopefully we're not too far away from a vaccine. That's right. So because it's National Night Out and people are not out, but they will be out some, Remind them again what to do to protect themselves from West Nile. Yeah, West Nile, um, again, there's a silver lining to all this. Uh, people, you know, are not outdoors as much this year. If they were, uh, we'd see a lot higher infection rate because we have a very, probably the highest on, on wreck we ever had, um, uh, viral transmission going on uh, between birds and mosquitoes. And once those mosquitoes got it and they, they, they bite a person, they transfer the virus. So uh, people need to, to make sure that uh, if they are out and about at any time, not just National Night Out, that, that you wear DEET or some other repellent, Skin So Soft. Uh, go to epa.gov and give you some really good recommendations uh, that uh, try to stay, stay away from outdoors at dusk and dawn. That's when mosquitoes are the most active. Uh, and then drain source pools around the house. Don't let it, you know, have water in buckets and tires and, and plant uh, plants and things like that. Uh, these are lazy mosquitoes. Uh, they, they don't go real far. So if you got a bunch of mosquitoes around your house, they probably, you know, have have these source pools where you have the larvae that become mosquitoes. You drain the water, you'll have fewer mosquitoes. They also maybe five houses each direction from where you live because they're lazy. Go talk to your neighbors talk about doing neighbors. the same thing. It's a good idea. Yeah. So because National Night Out is supposed to be about connecting cities, and city services with neighborhoods and code is not out this year. Yeah. How can people connect with y'all if they need to yeah. have a code violation? You know, if, if they want to report a violation, still the, the best way to do it is the My uh, Fort Worth app. And it's available on uh, Google and Apple at, at the different stores. You can go and you can use the online uh, version to report. But we think one of the most helpful tools we have there is, is right off of the, the city's webpage for the, the code compliance department is there's actually a link where you can talk type your address. You can use either use the one address link or the code officer link. You type your address in and it'll tell you who your code officer is. And you know, you're provided their cell number, their email. Um, and you know, even in this day of, of COVID, we can have 
a connection to the citizens we serve uh, in a very safe way because it's not a large gathering of people. Uh, it's two responsible people. Um, you can talk on the phone. So we just really encourage people to, to do that. And, and I'll tell you again, you know, talk about National Night Out, that there's a correlation overall uh, between crime and grime. And, and the more you clean up a community, the less crime you're going to have. And I will tell you that we continue to see a record number of visits to our drop-off stations. So people are taking advantage of this time to clean, clean up, up their properties and clean out the basements and the attics. Um, and we're also seeing collection at the curb at a much higher rate. So um, that is correlated into less activity for the code officers because there's less mess uh, that, that gets reported to us. That, and that's awesome. Brandon, thank you for being with me. You guys, code has everything. And Brandon has everything from public health, which is West Nile, COVID, the hurricane that we had, and then they have solid waste, which is your garbage pickup, recycles, and bulky, as well as sign violations. Oh, and yeah, everything. we have this <laughs> so that time of year. Thank you yes. for what you do. Thank we you. appreciate it. And National Night Out next year, hopefully, we'll be back in our neighborhoods where we belong, visiting with people face to face. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. With me now is our fire chief, Jim Davis. Chief. Mayor, thanks for having me. We're glad to have you. Um, National Night Out 2020, it's a little strange, isn't it? It is. It's a little strange, but we're all going to try to do this and get out and be a part of the community. You were with us last year for National yes. Night Out. You know, it's the 37th anniversary, and Fort Worth does a big National Night Out. You take fire trucks and firefighters? Yes, ma'am. Every community uh, in Fort Worth is represented by the um, fire stations that uh, serve that community. They're uh, engaging with the uh, neighborhood uh, associations as they... Uh, uh, move through the uh, evening and um, we we try to engage them in what uh, what we offer and what they need from us to make sure that uh, we're reporting back to the city leadership and making sure that we're working cohesively uh, to move our community forward. And really people think about firefighters and fire department being largely keeping them safe and f putting out fires. You do so much more than that. You go from medicine to drown proofing. Tell us a little bit about what all your firefighters are asked to do. Yeah, now. Mayor, thanks for asking that because you know the, the, the term, the Fort Worth Fire Department, you know, it's a generations it's a old term and yeah. in a lot of cases it's a misnomer. You know, a large percentage of what we do is, is medical related and, and responding to the needs of the medical uh, needs of our community uh, with and, uh, and in the support of MedStar um, and uh, making sure that we recognize from a public safety and public health standpoint of where we can uh, bridge a gap that uh, occurs in the community with everything from uh, drowning prevention, um, uh, infant mortality in our community. Our folks are invited into homes um, upwards of 150, 160,000 times a year um, and when we're in there, we, we, we encourage folks to just be aware and be mindful and, and help the neighborhoods uh, make sure that their homes are safe, that the um, smoke detectors are working, that they have carbon monoxide detectors, that if they find unsafe sleeping conditions for children, that they help to, to correct that through either education or from some type of referral to get a crib and those things. We're not, we're not in the discipline business. We're not looking to do that. We're just looking to make sure that, you know, we, we like you pointed out, we do so much more than fire. And uh, we're very proud of the work that they do, uh, our folks do um, to support this community. You should be proud. And I don't think anybody really realizes that when the firefighters are called, if they're called on a med call, say, and they look around and see unsafe conditions, they will help a family correct that. Yeah, they do. And um, we have a bunch of uh, resources that are available to us in the event that folks um, are unable to afford those resources. Uh, we work, um, you know, right now the, the COVID-19 has put such a strain on everybody, but the one benefit that the Fort Worth Fire Department has really been able to, to see out of it is the relationships that have developed between uh, the, the county health department, Vinny Tanasia and his team, uh, and the city, and making sure that you know we're communicating, we're making uh, daily conversations about what each other need and how we can support each other. And it's all in the best interest of trying to keep our community safe across Fort Worth. Because you've had a whole COVID team who volunteered to test people and to go into nursing homes where there was COVID. Yes, ma'am. One of the things earlier that, you know, in this whole COVID uh, problem was recognizing that the need for accurate, 
timely testing was available in the communities, especially our most vulnerable communities. And so working with public health, we stepped uh, into that gap and made sure that it, it was filled in a way that uh, we could uh, get folks tested, uh, get it turned around timely, make sure that it was accurate, and uh, that we could you know, work, like I said before, cohesively with other city agencies and county agencies to make sure that the public knew that you know, the Fort Worth Fire Department, um, when, when we're needed, we're problem solvers and, and our folks like to problem solve and this was a problem, it was a wicked problem to our community and, and um, we're happy to be a part of the solution to it. So unlike police where people have an NPO who patrols their neighborhood, we have a fire station somewhere in your neighborhood. Yes ma'am. And can citizens go? Absolutely. You know, I've been here two years and one of the things that I've really encouraged our folks is to make sure that the public feels welcome in their facility. Public funds put these facilities up, they put the firefighters in the community. What I'm encouraging our folks to do is, you know, when the weather's appropriate, doors are open, we should invite the public to come and see the, the resources that are available in their community. They should ask questions about them. And they should really feel free to have a honest conversation with the folks about what the needs of the community are and do so in such a way that they should expect that these uh, officers and, and firefighters get that information back to me so I can get it to folks like Mr. Cook and yourself so the policy can and the future um, needs of the community are identified and um, and decisions are made. Fire stations are really fun anyway. I always took my kids, I've taken my grandchildren. I had a couple of different Boy Scout groups and a campfire group and the firefighters are always welcoming. Show the kids around the firehouse, show them the truck, talk to them about safety. Yeah, and sometimes, and it's just kind of a fun thing, the mayors, I'll tell you sometimes that you know, it's, I'm not sure if it's the kids that have as much fun or the parents, and the parents drag the kids there as it's their <laughs> idea, because mom and dad really want to see the fire trucks, but we're, we're happy to entertain folks. That's, that's what we do. These, this is their community. This is their firehouse. Their tax dollars pay for this. We want them engaged with us. We want them knowing that we are an inviting presence for them in, our, in the community throughout Fort Worth. I thought the other day, I've got a five-year-old and a three-year-old that I haven't taken yet. It's a good excuse to go back Absolutely. and take them with Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else you want people to know about engaging with you and your department and what you can do in neighborhoods? No, you know, you mentioned the police earlier, and we're so fortunate here. We have a very good relationship between in public safety between police and fire. And and the thing about it is what we need the public to do is is to realize that we're all in this together moving forward in the best interest of our community and we need the public to be mindful and when they see something they need to be comfortable with saying something they they need to make sure that they teach their kids that firehouses are safe places in the community that they know that they can go there and that the public has confidence that we will do right by them and their children when they when they seek help there be it air for a flat tire on a bike or if somebody in the community has um, tried to harm them. They need to know they can be safe there. And heaven help us, you don't have it very often, but it is a safe place for people to take babies. It's a safe place. And, and about a year ago, there was a, just an, an amazing story that happened in North Fort Worth where that happened one morning. Uh, you know, we, we have a policy for that. We train our folks for that. Um, and one morning, these guys um, were checking their trucks and, and, and it unfolded in front of them. And I was amazingly impressed by the um, the empathy and the compassion of our folks on the in the engine house but then how they continued to follow up with uh, children's services and and made sure that that everybody was taken care of and, and there there was a complete wraparound approach to the health and the wellness of that child that day and while I'm really impressed by uh, the way our folks responded to it I'm even more impressed that the mother um, who did not feel that she was in a place um, to adequately take care of that child was comfortable enough with the Fort Worth Fire Department that she went there and sought help. And so from a community, that was a win, Mayor. That yeah. was a win that day, it's and I'm win. very proud of that for speaks, our community as whole. It speaks volumes yes, about your firefighters. Sure does. And your well, it speaks to the community, too. It does speak to the community. We've got a great community. Mm -hmm. Next year, Chief, you and I will be out. We'll take a fire truck and we'll go see I, some of these neighborhoods. I'll take you anywhere you want to go, Mayor. 2021, we're going to be out and about. Yes, ma'am. So thank you for coming on today. I Thanks appreciate for having it me with in. all that you've got going on. We really appreciate your time. All right, let's get you out. You guys go out, enjoy the rest of your national night out, talk to your neighbors, put your mask on, and be safe. Thanks.